factual fiction of Paul Ginnan's historical hoax. November 7, 2002. The core inspiration of the hoax is to profit in some way from the gullibility of people too empty-headed to know better. To prey on the innocent or the ignorant, for that matter, has been a source of amusement and arrogance for cruel, shifty bastards since the beginning of time. As any fool knows, we've all fallen for practical jokes and impractical pranks at some point of our lives. This thing is, until you know better, you don't know shit and your easy pickings. For example, are the Greenhorns, who just don't know any better, would be a recent hoax involving numerous Portuguese women who hung outside their women's, burying their naked breasts for all to see. Why? Because they received telephone calls from a completely anonymous doctor who informed them that they were eligible for a special monograms via satellite. P.T. Barnum's classic line will never go out of fashion. Unquestionably, there is a sucker born every minute. Other hoaxes involve more sophisticated and harmful plots that can lead to personal injury or even financial ruin, which is more often than not into sinister categories of criminal mischief or outright larceny. Here are some examples like Boilerplate, the creation of a 39-year-old com comical artist and amateur historian, Paul Gunan. Boilerplate is little-known Victorian-era robot that carols with luminaries of the period, traversed the globe and shared adventures and endeavours with the likes of Theodore Roosevelt and Pancho Villa. The robot's exploits are painstakingly chronicled in most pleasant detail on Gurn's website. The site bulges with information, souvenir, vintage photographs and written accounts dating from the robot's initial constructions unveiling in 1893 to the mysterious disappearance during World War I. In the face of that evidence, the kicker is that boilerplate never really existed. As true as it all looks, it's just an elaborate hoax, and at times they're extremely funny. Mechanical Marvel Boilerplate outed. Boilerplate was a mechanical man developed by Archibald Campion during the 1880s and unveiled at the 1893 World Columbian Exposition. The title page of Gurnan's site commands, Boilerplate is one of the history's greatest ironies, a technological milestone that remains largely unknown. Even in an age that gave birth to an automobile, aeroplane, a functioning mechanical man should have been a recorded more significance. Only recently did the vintage robot finally get the attention that some thinks it deserves. Boilerplate's Portland-based character was outed by Thomas Hayden in a special edition of US News and World Report entitled The Art of Hoax. Boilerplate works, Hayden told me, because of people's gullibility rather than Gurman's gull. That being said, the presentation of Boilerplate's site is very nicely done and filled with facts and antidotes and charming photographs that lend it to an impressive verisimilitude. It is just that an underlying premise that Victorian technology could create a hominoid automation is completely unbelievable. Modern robotists still can't achieve anything close. He's an artist and a Victorian sci-fi boss, Hayden opinioned. Obviously more amused by Gunnan's ruse than alarm. Put the two interests together and you get boilerplate. But, you know, anything about the history of robotics or about history at all, really, it's immediately obvious that the site is a joke. The amazing thing is that some seemingly intelligent people believe it anyway. I don't think he really fooled experts per se, as in no robotist would fall for it. Historians who would fall fell for it presumably had no background on in technology and I would imagine fired off inquisitive emails without really thinking about the possibility that the site was a spoof. Hayden's hope direct detective advice. The first clue that something might not be true is the reaction. Oh my god, that's so freaking cool. I can't believe it's really true. If it seems too good, cool, weird to be true, hey, big surprise, chances it is. Old pride and embarrassment. Lightly stirring a small cappuccino inside the common grounds of Coffee House, Gunnar and I sat on teetering stools overlooking Hawthorne with the mid-afternoon sun illuminating his bleached blonde hair on the doorway sideburns of Chicago, transplanted turned his gaze from the busy boulevard to meet my own and accomplished tone. He gave me the skinny on boilerplate. Boilerplate started out as an outline illustrated pitch to encourage publishers to consider the concept of for a graphic novel. 
and things simply escalated from there. Shortly after posting his original smattering of images and texts, Gurnan began to get letters from visitors to his site. Many of them thought Boilerplate was the real deal, and Gurnan was more than happy to play along. After all, it was always his intention to make Boilerplate appear as colourful and genuine as possible. When the idea first hit home that the fictional Boilerplate was regularly being perceived as authentic, Gurnan admitted he felt a combination of both pride and embarrassment. Certainly, I felt happy about having achieved my goal, he said. I put this thing across trying to be real, and people bought into it, so that's a success. But, as an amateur historian, I feel responsibility to get my story right. So I felt bad about some of these people being hoaxed. It was a mixed bag. But, he revealed, I thought I was getting this reaction, and I wasn't really trying. Then what would happen if I really tried? Kribe Robotor. It should be noted that not everyone has fallen so easily for the boilerplate hoax, along with letters of amusement posted on his site. Plenty of examples from people who get the joke and praised his talents as a hoax puppet master. Boilerplate is a hoot, one reader wrote. I wonder if he ever met Elvis. Another reader noted, very convincing presentation. For a while I thought I was reading the actual research rather than fiction. You did make it all up, right? Even the stuffed shirts at NASA got into the act offering Boilerplate as one of its space terabotics program, Cool Robot of the Week listings, coincidentally on April the 1st, 2002. Guna notes that the non-believer, believer ratio hosts around, hovers around two to one, respectively. I do have a few clues here and there if people look at the whole site. They eventually figured it out, but they are buried. The true impact of his dirty deeds smacked Guna, and when he got a letter from Thomas Giovanni, whose own history site is linked to boiler plates. Dimini's site features information on Hugh McKeed, a real person who Goonan lists as being married to Lily Campen, Archibald Campen's sister. Remember, it was Archibald Campen who Goonan says designed and built a boiler plate. He, Duvernay, wrote in asking me to send information on the fictitious, ca- fictitious character that I had married to a real-life passage that he was an expert of McKee or Lily's husband. That's when I become embarrassed and realise the implications. Oh my gosh, I might really be screwed things up for people. Grunin said he wrote back to him apologising, but adding, but added it was important that he kept the biographer's link on Boilerplate's site. I have real life, real life links spread throughout the site for further information. It's not unlike after you watch television program and it says it at the end. If you want to know more, go to your library. This is my way of hopefully encouraging people to look into the more obscure aspects of history that I enjoyed. He, Duvernay, wrote back saying that he was perfectly happy with it and that it was okay because it meant he hadn't missed anything. It's very important to him that he'd gotten all his research right. I felt very relieved. Early on, Goonan got a letter from a guy who thought boilerplate was amazing. But when he tried to search for other mentions of the fictional character on the internet, he found, soon found search results pointed out back to Scudan's site, Madeline Mutina. One of the reasons Boilerplate site not only hooks unsuspecting internet fish but reels them in is because Pearl Gunam is a sickler for details, historical and illustrative. Gunam is convinced that it's the little things that matter. I found that it really helps to sell the site and its emphria that seems to be inconsequential. His site is riddled with vivid examples of his obsession with details. It's one thing to have sort of a centerpiece or like a photograph of boilerplate with famous personage, but other things to have little details that you wouldn't normally think of, like little souvenir tickets and things like that, or to have a detail from what's supposed to be some kind of Soviet propaganda poster. And you just see part of it. Things that don't relate to your story in any way way that helps flesh it out. The idea come from Goon and working in comic books. Traditionally, publishers like DC, Dark Horse, Mercury Studios have assembly lines of artists creating finished projects on a monthly basis, giving them little to time to waste on the small stuff. That's why comics are sort of regarded as a ghetto medium for a lot of illustrators. A lot of it's kind of half work because of the timetable. As a result, Goonan believes most comic art- artists avoid including all the particulars particulars that breathe life into the scene. Particularly, he feels compelled to embrace his own work. In fact, he obsessively includes as much minuta as he possibly can squeeze in. 
are meddling in detail about the times, the places, the dates, and the specific events, but then are meddling vague about the robot itself. How did it function? What was his power source? Was he sentient? Could he carry on conversations? I don't include any of that, but it's so loaded with other details that readers themselves fill them in subconsciously. I think that makes a stronger audience connection when they can bring in their own baggage to the character. As authentic as Baller Plate appears, and honestly, if I didn't know better, I'd be inclined to believe it actually did exist. Gunan's embedded clues should be able to warn any attentive person of historical embellishments, as well as outright falsifications, right? Guess not. There will always be at least some percentage of people who are going to believe it anyways. No matter what I say, it's like Orson Welles and his radio broadcast The World of the Worlds at the top of the show, and halfway through the show he made disclaimers, but people weren't paying attention, they were freaking out, and it's all in the details as it were. How Buller Play It really works. Well, while this inspiration often comes from fascination with Victorian times, which celebrated scientific innovations as well as sci-fi themes in pulp novels, Gurman's new perfect blend of historical facts, artistic executions, make Bowler Plate's story even more convincing. Those pulp novels, of which has now become somewhat of ex- expert on, provide the basis for Gurman's creativity. Bowler Plate is done in that tradition, Gurman time, presented as if it were a real blend talking, a vintage to the blurred line of what exists already. That's why I've integrated Bowler Plate into the storyline and disclosed. It does not interfere with actual history. Any event I talk about, right down to the smallest detail, actually took place. It's just that they didn't have this robot standing next to them at the time. For instance, I have a sequence where I've talked about how one point the US forces under General Perishing go into Mexico into a punitive expedition against Pancho Villa. During a combat situation, there's a machine gun trained on Pancho Villa and let loose a fuselade of bullets, and Boiler Plate steps in front of the pancho and manages to save his life. He prevents the machine gun bullets from reaching Pancho Villa, except one which manages to get him in the leg. Well, Gunan announced triumphantly, that actually happened. That scene is exactly from history. He was attacked, he was shot in the leg, he was carried off that night, but there wasn't a robot. Similar tales to pick Boiler Plate pulling around within famous inventors, Victorian ladies of the Japanese Imperial Army. Arctic explorers and toothy Teddy Roosevelt and his raid, rough riders, among others, I initially established a timeline where Boiler Plate is unveiled at the Chicago World Fair in 1893, and just because I always enjoyed the stories that ended in somewhat mystery, you know, like Amelia Earhart, I have this him disappearing during World War Two and presumed killed, destroyed, whatever, continually dig dictates that all the Boiler Plate's adventures must take in place in that time period, which Gunan thinks was the last great age of adventure and exploration. Trying to get to the South Pole, mysterious lost continent or river, river's ball, we had everything mapped out, everything in, bet- in between is fair game. I pursue books from the period, and when I come across a storyline, or in particular find a photograph that catches my eyes, once I choose a photograph that works for me and a storyline that works, then I go about doing Photoshop and composing and write a story around it. But again, he insisted, it doesn't appear with the real history. That's actually an interesting challenge to try and shorehorn shore a, f- a fiction into something real without affecting the outcome. A successful hoax. The flood of recent unexpected attention regarding Gunan and Boiler Plate project has not only surprised him, he seems to have worked commercially with the results he even hadn't even imagined. It's entirely possible he was pulling my chain. I can be such a sucker for satisfactory conclusion, but as he liked the remaining foam... As he licked the remaining foam from his lips, Gunan said he'd been offered a potentially lucrative deal, where Ambula Plate was soon to appear in an oversized coffee table book depicting from its various exploits. Furthermore, Boiler Plate was also featured in a pilot episode of upcoming television series Tactical Meter called Sifo Show. And possibly the most surprising news to date, filmmaker Dan Jane who won the Best Feature Documentary in for his film Chiefs at Robert De Niro's 2002 Tribeca Film Festival, 
has secured the rights to produce a full-length mockumentary about boilerplate. Ken Burns style anticipate woefully so plans across boilerplate's comically sombre sepia tone pus and sincere quotes from voice actors portraying Victorian luminaries. In the light of this unexpected turn of fortune, it seems Paul Gurnan certainly has his future work cut out for him while he reinvents the past. Trust him to continue an interesting story to turn people on history and to have fun. more on boilerplate. 